What is computational chemistry and why should I care? If you're anything like my family, I just tell them I do chemistry on the computer instead of in the lab. That pretty much keeps them awake just about long enough to hear what I do. If you want a deeper explanation, then this course is for you. Computational chemistry is just a way to model the real world. Pretty simple. Except that it's not. We'll get into why it's not. And we'll try to make it more simple. This course I made primarily for three people, let's say. Those who are genuinely curious about what computational chemistry is, those who are just starting out in computational chemistry, and for also medicinal chemists and experimental chemists who collaborate regularly with computational chemists. And you know, they just want to understand some of the jargon, some of the terminology, the things that we can do. For experimental chemists that are watching, I want you to get a lot out of this course. I'd like you to be able to do the basic things that will help you interact and it will help you advance your projects. So a lot of times whenever I'm collaborating with an experimental chemist, I have three-dimensional structures that I would love to show and the experimental chemist may not always be aware of the type of software that is available to them. When you're thinking about your SAR, when you're thinking through the chemical modifications that you can make to your drugs, it would be a lot more advantageous to you to be able to see them in three dimensions and be able to visualize hydrogen bonds and binding pockets that are available to you. So for the experimental chemist, I'd like to give you a hands-on approach to be able to visualize some of these interactions, to be able to pull up a PDB structure and be able to look at the protein ligand binding interactions in real time, to be able to rotate them, to be able to zoom in and out, to be able to measure bond distances. All of these things that are fundamental three-dimensional properties, but that will help you as a chemist design better molecules. Computational chemistry has contributed a lot to science. And while I'm going to be focusing primarily on drug discovery applications, there are many more things that are very interesting that you should look into. AlphaFold can help predict protein structure. AlphaFold, the first iteration that came out, wasn't so great for drug discovery purposes because they were trained on APO structures. As later revisions have come out, now we're able to potentially model protein ligand interactions. We're even able to model protein-protein interactions for molecular glues and protax. This is very exciting. Machine learning is coming into its own. I still prefer first principles calculations, physics-based calculations. However, machine learning potentials are growing in their capability to model real physical processes and do it much faster. Computational chemistry these days is still slightly hindered by computational resources, but the number of computational resources that are becoming available to us via cloud computing, via high-performance computing clusters, high-powered GPUs, all of these things make calculations a lot faster, and we're able to model much larger systems than we ever have been before. For drug discovery, we can look at protein ligand binding with molecular dynamics and free energy perturbation. We can look at selectivity and organic reactions for the process side. I've looked at things like thermodynamics and kinetics of reactions, selectivity of reactions, catalyst design. All of these areas computational chemistry can contribute to a drug discovery project. Computational chemistry is great for structure prediction. It's great for elucidating metabolites, for example, using predicted NMR chemical shifts to distinguish between isomers and tautomers where the experimental spectrum might be a little bit ambiguous. I've used computational chemistry tools for mass spec, for looking at interesting reorganization chemistry in a high energy environment. There's so many possibilities for computational chemistry to contribute. For this course, I'd like to go over structure-based drug design tools like molecular docking, molecular dynamics, free energy perturbation. I'd like to go over some homology modeling, what that means, what we can do with it and what we can't. Also, I'd like to cover some basic ligand-based drug design tools. I'd like to cover ligand alignment, which is my preferred way of quote-unquote docking. Tools like ROCKS, Phase, 
40 shape, QSAR, or quantitative structure activity relationships, and how machine learning can also help with those whenever enough data is provided. If you have questions or suggestions, topics you'd like me to cover, drop them in the comments below. With that, hit the like and subscribe so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. And until next time.